Okay, so after we have actually identified the different, the five different types, um, there's actually much more to proof. And one of the things that we're going to loop back around is we're going to loop back around to the things that we've already done, we've already talked about. And you can see here, like definition of a midpoint. We've already talked about that and what that means, but now we're going to be applying it to actual triangles and triangle pictures, which is quite a bit more difficult than what we were doing before. So um, we're going to be using these pieces of information in addition to what you already see. So for example, I'm going to skip down to vertical angles, okay, theorem down here. Um, so vertical angles theorem is going to give us a pair of angles, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and just mark, for example, so let's assume that these were already marked in the problem that you were given, okay? So if you came across to this and I asked you, which of the five criteria could you use? You would say none because I'm only given two sets of markings, right? So I need a third set. Well, this list right here, which is the second list that you should absolutely have right next to you when you are taking any assessment, is, uh, is going to show you how you can get additional pieces of information uh, that were not given to you in the actual picture. Okay, so not every problem you come across is going to be marked with three markings, and that doesn't necessarily always mean that you're going to be able to say no. So for example, in this picture, I see vertical angles. So I'm allowed to make a statement that the two vertical angles are congruent to each other, okay? So vertical angles will give me a pair of congruent angles. Which ones? Okay, so in the picture here, it's going to be this angle and this angle here. And how do I say that? You actually must use three letters and you have to write it in this very specific form. So we've talked about notation a lot, but notation will get docked off quite a bit if you're not using it correctly on proof. So this is an angle, it is not a triangle, so I need to use my angle symbol, which means you'll have to probably write it versus type it, um, unless you're gonna use the less than symbol. And then you'll say three letters with A has to be the middle letter. So I'm gonna start with B, A, C. And that will allow me to state this angle right here. Okay, now I need to be able to say that that angle is congruent to this angle right here. Now, also needs an angle symbol. And because I put B first, on the triangle here on the left, notice that that has the single tick mark. I'm gonna start with the letter D first over here and go D, A, E on this side. Okay, so that's a pair of vertical angles. Now there are much more um, options. Obviously you see this whole page here, but the two that we're gonna focus on today are vertical angles and reflexive property, which will, will allow you to do the first page of the homework tonight. And then we're gonna practice using just those two things, okay? So vertical angle theorem, very important. It's something you're gonna use a ton. That is how it should look when you write it out. And then the second one we're gonna practice is all the way at the bottom. and it is called the reflexive property. So the reflexive property most of the time is going to give you a pair of sides. But let me take it back to algebra one. The reflexive property of congruence from algebra one says that A is congruent to A. A is the same as A. So what you're doing here is you're giving two things that ha actually happen in both triangles. So what you'll see is you'll see that the two triangles are connected somewhere or somehow. So like right here, they both have C, D. So if there were markings on this picture, they would not include this side, but you can make a statement that says the C, D from the left triangle, which is over here from this triangle, is the same thing as the CD 
from the right triangle over here, which seems obvious, but when you're doing a proof, you must have three statements before you can say the triangles are congruent. So this is a statement. Now, because this is a pair of sides, I am going to put the segment bar over top, and that would be, and I would then probably put a tick mark on that side to allow myself to understand that I have another set of markings there. But reflexive property can also give you a pair of angles. Most of the time it will be a pair of sides, but you can actually see it in a pair of angles as well. So you can do angles too. You won't see any of that, I don't believe, today, but um, you can do a pair of angles as well. So if you see this set of triangles here, what you have is overlapping triangles. So you have a triangle here, which is FIH. And then you have a triangle, let's go this way. Here, which is GJH. And they both have angle H as a complete angle in their triangle. So I can say angle H is congruent to angle H. And I don't have to use three letters here because that's the only angle there. Now you might say, well, wait a minute, couldn't I have said angle C is congruent to angle C up here? Well, when you say angle C, do you mean this one or do you mean this one? There are two angles that have C as its vertex and technically you have three because there's a big one as well. Whereas H, there's only one angle here that could be angle H. So that's why it's a little bit different here. I cannot say angle C is congruent to angle C. Okay. All right, let's put this into practice. I'm going to turn the page and we're just going to practice those two things and those two things only today. We'll practice more uh, tomorrow. So I'm going to turn the page here. We'll practice on the back of this. This is a continuation of in class 21. Go up to the top here. So by itself, are these two triangles congruent to each other? Well, what I've got so far is I've got a pair of sides that are marked, and I've got a pair of angles that are marked. Two things is not enough, okay? So two things by themselves, not enough. I would have to say no, okay? But with my two added pieces of information, I can say that any side that is shared by both triangles is congruent. So I could put a marking on here. I'm going to do a double tick mark because my single tick mark is already used. So I could say that TG segment bar over top is congruent to TG and that's reflexive. Okay, so now that I put an additional marking here and put an S, my triangles are congruent by side, angle, side. And if you want, really quick, we could also practice, we have an extra blank here, you do not have to do this, I'm just saying for practice sake, you could go ahead and write the triangle congruency statement, so triangle T, let's start up at T. Let's go T E G is congruent to triangle T B G. That would be its congruency statement if you had to write it, but you don't. Okay, we're not quite there yet. All right, let's go to number two. Number two, do you see vertical angles? Anytime you see like a little bow tie kind of, even if it's a little crooked bow tie, so I actually see that here and I see that here, you're going to have a set of vertical angles. They're right here. Oh, I already have an O here, so maybe let's use X to mark that set of triangles. I actually don't like using X. Let's put a little asterisk. There you go. Okay, so the additional reason used here is vertical angles, and I'm going to practice writing the angle. So angle B has to be the middle letter, so let's go A, B, C. Oh, how convenient. A, B, C in order is congruent to angle, not triangle, because I'm saying an angle. I'm saying vertical angles. 
Okay, so I started with A, A, B, C, and A has that double tick mark along the side. So let's go H, H, B, M. And that is vertical angles theorem. Reflexive is the reflexive property. And those are the only two that we're practicing. Okay, so are these triangles now congruent? Sure, I have side, I have side, and I have an angle pair in between those two sides, which that is a thing. Side, side, and an angle in between. That is one of my five options, so those are congruent. And again, you could take a second to go ahead and put um, the two are the five criteria across the top so that you have them right here so you don't have to keep flipping back and looking at them. That might be a good idea. Okay, even if I marked the reflexive here on this picture, even if I marked this shared side, so this side is shared right here, even if I marked that, I don't have enough. I have one pair of angles and I have one side. So, and this side counts for both. So sometimes students might try to say, angle, side, angle. But then what happens is you traveled from one triangle to the other triangle to use your markings. And it's also common um, when the triangles are connected, some students try to say side, angle, and then travel into this other triangle for side, but we can't do that. So typically what I like to do is I like to cover up one of the triangles and then um, read my letters from there. So if I just cover up one of these triangles, all I have is an angle and a side, which is only two, so I'm going to say that these are not congruent. And I'm going to go ahead and write only two. There's only two, there's not three, so that didn't count. Okay, again, this would be a very good place to pause the video and do problems four, five, and six. That's it, only four, five, and six, and then we will finish with seven, eight, and nine tomorrow. But I would pause the video here to try problems four, five, and six um, before I actually go through them to see how you're doing on this topic. Okay, I'm gonna continue on here with four, five, and six. Okay, so additional reason, we already marked it, but we've actually gotta say it here. So let's go angle. Let's start with I don't know, I just like to start at the top. So DCE is congruent to so I started with D over here, so I'm gonna have to start with N over here because that's got the three tick marks on the side. So I'll go N C M. And then vertical angles theorem so now based on what I have are the triangles congruent that's a yes so I have a, two pairs of angles so you can go ahead and write your two A's and then the question is the side marking is that in between the two angles or is it not? So I've got angle, angle, and the side is not in between them. So don't write the yes in between your two A's. Then the next one has this shared side so that's reflexive properties. We're only practicing the two today. So you really only have two options, reflexive or vertical. And this one's gonna be reflexive. So we'll go H, J is congruent to. Now technically you can kind of see that the two triangles kind of flip. So H to J would be the same as J to H on the other triangle, but it really doesn't matter for segments if you write them in either order. So I just typically, write them in the same order, and then say the reflexive 
property. So if I were to mark that, let's put three tick marks on that one because one and two are already being used. So then looking at the tick marks that you have there, are they congruent? Yes, because I have a side, a set of sides, and then another pair of sides. Okay, last one. Even if I mark the reflexive here, so if I say reflexive, so DC is congruent to DC reflexive. Even if I add that reflexive double tick mark there, that is not enough because there are only two sets of markings instead of three. We'll finish up 7, 8, and 9 uh, tomorrow. And the homework, again, is in class 21, but you're only working on the first, or sorry, homework 21, but you're only working on the first page. So that would be problems. Here's homework 21. Problems 1 through 8. It does have this added piece of information. So we can do the first one together. Um, so it says, instead of saying yes or no here, so instead of having that yes or no to circle, okay, it does have instead um, the triangle congruency statement. So you only need to write the triangle congruency statement if it's a yes. So if you're looking at here, I've got side angle side markings already. So side angle side. And then I need to write the triangle congruency statement because my answer was yes. So now I have triangle C, D, E. So I started with C over here. So C to D is that single tick mark. So then I'll go H to P on this triangle here, H, P, and then G. Did I need to do any additional reasons? No, because I already had three sets of markings in the picture. So I didn't need to add anything to that one. Here you'll have to add your reflexive. Okay, so that will go in here. So it's not a yes or a no, but when you come down to this one, number four is actually a no. So that's your first no, there are two on the page. But when you come down to number four, this one right here, they're not congruent, so we're not going to do any of that. And it specifically says what to do in the uh, go formative, like what you should enter for each one if it comes down to not being able to do it. Okay, so that gives you an idea of how to fill in all of the blanks here because the blanks are a little bit different from the notes page.